we are interested in parallelism, so we are going to look at how we are going to parallelize this. Okay. Let's write the algorithm. Right. So let's call it prim MST. And first let's write the sequential algorithm. Right. What you get as input is V E W and maybe some vertex from which you want to start the prims algorithm. All right. First, I initialize my tree with this root vertex, right? And then I set this D of R to be zero, right? For starters, I have to initialize this D array, right? So how do I initialize the D array? So I'm going to look at all the vertices, right, which are not in the current set or other than R. And I'm going to check if the distance from root to that vertex, if RV belongs to the edge set, then I'm going to set its distance to the weight of that edge. And if not, if that edge does not exist, then what do I do? Well, in that case, I'll just initialize dv to infinity. Okay. Now starts the actual execution of the prims algorithm. So I'm going to have a loop, which I'm going to repeat n minus one times. Why? What do I do? In each iteration, I add one edge and I include one new vertex in my set t right in the tree t so i just require n minus one iterations exactly so i don't need to make it more complicated so the first thing i do is i find a vertex u for which the distance is the minimum amongst all the vertices not in t right i look at all the vertices which are not in t and i look at the one which has the minimum distance value what is the value that we store in d the value stored in d is the shortest distance edge from the set t to that particular vertex All right, so once we find this, then what do we do? I just need to add this vertex to my tree, right? I need to look at all the vertices that are not in the current set T, right? and I need to update their D values. Okay, how do I update their D values? Well, their D value will become the minimum of their current D value, right? So I'm not going to look at all the edges again, right? I'm, I already know the last D value and the only other possibility, the only other edge that could have been added by including U in the tree is the edge UV. Right, that's the only new edge that could have possibly appeared. Right, so I look at dv and I look at w u comma v, and I take the min of the two, whichever one is smaller. So if I see a new edge from u to v which has smaller weight than d of v, then I update it. Right, as simple as that. So here we are assuming that w u v is going to be infinity if there is no edge. Okay. All right, that's it. That's my sequential algorithm. It's a simple algorithm. Okay, so now we want to parallelize this. Let's start with OpenMP parallelization. How can I parallelize this in OpenMP? Okay, first let's choose the data structure, right? Okay, so let's just assume that we are going to work with the adjacency matrix. So 
so you have the set of all the vertices a b c d e here and a b c d e here right and each entry here is nothing but your w of u comma v right that's the adjacency matrix storing the weight of the edges right so this is order n time so what is the sequential run time well i have to run order n iterations over here and in each iteration i have to find the minimum du amongst the current du's and then i have to go and update for every vertex its new d value right so this in the worst case would be order n right so this would be theta n square okay all right so how do i parallelize this using open mp in the shared memory model so in the shared memory model this entire w matrix is visible to everybody okay so i just need to figure out how to divide the work so there are two parts right one is finding this u which minimizes this distance to v so how can i do this in parallel I mean, you could do that in a tree fashion where you could break the array into parts and compute the minimum of all, the, all those parts in parallel and then combine. Right. So typically what happens is the number of processors is much smaller than n, right? The total number of vertices. So what we'll do is we'll just allocate n by p vertices to each processor. It's going to compute the min dv over those entries, right? Over those vertices that it is it is responsible for. We don't really call this data distribution. Why? Because we are not distributing the data to different processors, right? This is shared memory model. What we are actually doing is dividing the work. Although it looks quite similar over here, but actually we are dividing the work, right? Not not a data distribution. Okay. So I basically make each processor responsible for n by p vertices. It calculates the min of that, and then I basically have to calculate the min of all of these, right? And how do I do that? Yeah, I can do that in log p steps, right? By just doing it in a binary manner, right? Construct a binary tree over the processors and just communicate. Do we have to do this manually? Can uh, like, is there no OpenMP reduce for minimum? Yes, there is. So we'll come to that, right? All right, so that's the way we are going to handle this one. And what about this part? What do I do over here? So again, I'm going to make each processor responsible for n by p vertices, right, as before. And what that processor is going to do is it is going to look at the dv value for that vertex and the wuv value, once we know the new u, right, it's going to look at the wuv value. and then it's just going to update dv right so you see any memory race conditions are there any memory race conditions over here so the only value being written to is dv right so can two processors be writing to the same dv no sir no right because we divided the vertices to the processors okay all right so the open mp implementation is not that difficult it's quite straightforward so what are the primitives we are going to use what are the calls we are going to use to do this so let's look at that right so for this one we can use hash pragma OMP, you can define the variable u to be of the type a reduction variable. Okay, so you can define this to be a reduction variable and you can specify what is the type of reduction, right? So you can say that this reduction is either additive reduction or min reduction, right? So here we are interested in min reduction. Okay, let me remove this plus. So look up the exact syntax from the link I gave you, right? What is the exact syntax for specifying the 
reduction variables. Okay. What this does is it automatically takes care of the reduction. It does a lot of complicated things, right? So what it's going to do is around this code. First, at this point, it's going to create a local copy of you. Okay. And then it's going to basically divide this. So, okay, so this is hash move MP4, and then I'm specifying you to be a reduction variable. So it will create a local copy of you. And so this for loop will be divided amongst the processors. Right. So I have to put a for loop over here, right? I'm not going into the details of that. I'm sure you can do it on your own. It's going to create a local copy of you. So this is all internal, right? So again, uh, you know, OpenMP is just a specification. It doesn't talk about the implementation, but any reasonable implementation of OpenMP would do it in a smart manner. And this is the smart way to do it, that you create a local copy of you. And the iterations of the for loop are divided amongst the processors. So each processor is responsible we generally call it threads in terms of OpenMP. So each thread is responsible for a set of vertices, for a set of iterations, right? So what is the iteration here? You're going to basically run through all the vertices, right? For u equal to zero, u less than n, u plus plus, right? That's what your for loop is going to look like. Right? This is the for loop you're going to parallelize. So u is basically going to be the index of the vertex, and we are assuming that the indices are numbered from zero to n minus one. Okay. So these indices are going to be divided amongst the threads. So each thread is responsible for some set of indices, which means some set of vertices. And amongst those, it's going to compute the min in this local copy of you. Okay, that's how a reasonable implementation of the reduction variable would work. And then at the end, it would basically combine all of these, right? It would do a reduce across the processors. Now, how do you do a reduce across the processors? You can do it in log p steps, but again, that is only useful if you have lots of processors, lots of threads, right? But that's typically not the case in shared memory. You have a limited number of threads, maybe of the order of 30, 32 or so, right? Or 64. But if you don't have a large number of processors, you can simply use a critical section over here. This is practically speaking, right? Theoretically speaking, yeah, you can do this in log p steps. You can build a logical tree over the indices 0 to p minus 1 by making the child of any node i as 2 times i and 2 times i plus 1, right? And so on, right? Details that we don't really need to get into. Okay. So you can do it either way. It depends on the implementation. A reasonable implementation, as I said, what it would do is it will probably check the number of threads right and see if the number of threads is very large it would probably go in a tree like manner and do the reduce and if the number of threads is too small it might just use a critical section and just reduce so look up the reduction variable in openmp okay all right let's come to the second step now so let's say we found the u right so I have a variable u now, which is accessible to everybody. It's a shared memory model. And now I want to do the second step. Okay, before we go there, what do I actually have? What did I reduce? Do I reduce u or do I reduce d of u? D of u. D of u, right? So from an implementation perspective, you have to be a little more careful. I'm actually reducing d of u. What does that mean that when I finish this operation, what do I have? Do I have the word? Sorry. No, I have the weight of the edge. No, I have the weight of the edge. I don't have the vertex. So how do I get the vertex now? I mean, in the example we saw, right? What happened in the very first step? There were two edges at a distance of one. Right, so I could have picked either of them, but I cannot pick both of them together, right? We'll not get into what happens if you pick both of them, but let's just stick to picking one of them. I don't have that vertex right now, right? I just have the distance to the vertex. So how do I find out the vertex? Maybe um, I trade through all the vertices again and in a shared variable, uh, all the vertices again parallelly and update in a shared variable, whichever vertex has that weight. 
so there is no race condition here as okay but yeah there might be a more clever way to do it well look how much work is being done over here in in parallel right uh, what how much work is each processor doing it is already doing order n by p work right because even to find the min right it's basically looking at all those vertices yeah so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to find the vertex having smallest index so we can do it the way you said right all of them can go and update a shared variable there is a race condition but it's okay because whichever is written last to the main memory that's the one which will finally be visible to everybody right and it's okay for it to be any of them right because it doesn't matter which one you really pick so what you're saying is correct we are going to use the same approach when we come to distributed memory right so this is shared memory in distributed memory you know the same variable is not accessible to everybody so that we don't have to revisit this again let's just look at another approach right so i'm going to find the vertex having the smallest index for which d of u is equal to that min value right i can again repeat the same thing right i can again do a reduction this time i, I do a reduction on the actual index and i am again picking the minimum is that clear so each processor locally finds the minimum using whatever data structure it wants locally it finds the minimum of all the vertices allocated to it which one has the minimum index so it also might have multiple vertices with the same du value the same min value but it just picks the one with the minimum index and then and if it doesn't have it will just set it to infinity or something right and then you do a reduction operation using min operation and this will just tell you the smallest index vertex having the min du is that clear yes sir uh, so but um, can we also use reduction for a uh, non primitive variable types like for example if you could um, use reduction for pairs then we yeah, have yeah. Pairs. So, yeah right so okay. double check that if that is the case yeah then you do reduction using openmp with your own data structure again it will be worthwhile comparing whether that is faster than just doing two reductions or not right something worth looking at okay but in case you don't have support for reduction for reduction on your own data structure then this is the way to do it you do it in two steps and in the second step you find the smallest index right it's a useful thing to know all right now let's come to the remaining part of the code so what happens over here in this part of the code adding of u to t is fine that any processor can do it one processor will do that now we come to this work right uh, i have to update the dv values so again this one is trivial right i just need to include a hash pragma for mp4 right i put this just before this for loop that's all i do over here okay this is starting to look dirty and of course uh, this for loop can't be traversing a set and all so it will just be like the for loop we've already seen above right this for loop it will be similar in structure where the vertices are specified by indices okay is that fine